Hey guys, welcome back to RPO Restorations. So with the weather changing, it's starting to get a little bit colder out. Figured now would be a good time to start a carburetor series on chokes. How they work and things you need to check and adjust on them to ensure that your car starts properly in the cold weather. Now we're going to start this series with a five point video. The five adjustments that you need to check on your electronically controlled quadrajet or dual jet carburetor to ensure smooth cold weather operation. So let's jump in and get started. All right, so before we dive into how the system works and the adjustments that you need to check, I just want to give everybody, for those of you that are not familiar with how a choke system works, just a quick 30 second primer on what they actually do. So when you first start your car and the motor's cold, it requires a lot more fuel than it does air in order to operate properly and smoothly. However, because your mixture control screws are pre-adjusted, the carburetor can't really change the way that it feeds the fuel mixture to the motor. So what a choke system does is it uses a valve to close off the airflow to your carburetor in order to change the ratio and increase the ratio of fuel so that your car starts and runs properly. That's the basic simplified version of how one of these systems works. Now there are two types. There are electric chokes and hot air chokes. The electric choke has a wire that runs to the chokes uh, valve on the side of the carburetor that operates almost like a toaster. Electric current heats it up and as it heats the coil inside, it opens the valve on top of the carburetor and slowly feeds more air in until you reach operating temperature. A hot air choke system uh, does the same thing, but it sucks hot air uh, from the intake manifold off the engine and it uses the heat of the engine to open the spring inside. But for our purposes in this video, really doesn't matter which one you have, whether it's an Oldsmobile with a hot air system or Buick Pontiac Chevrolet with an electric system. They both function the same. So let's run through the choke system cycle and I'll show you the five things that you need to check as we run through it. So let's take a look at the carburetor. So the first thing you do when you get in a car with a carbureted motor that's cold is you wanna give it a pump of gas to one, set the choke, and two, use the accelerator pump to provide a little extra squirt of gas just to get things going. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Now, when we did that, you notice that the butterfly valve or the choke valve closed. What that did is cycle this cam over here, put the spring tension from our choke coil on the rod here and close the valve. Now that will bring us to the first adjustment that you need to check and we're going to move over to the other side and I will show you that. The first adjustment that you need to check on your electronic carburetor is the adjustment of the choke rod and how it interfaces here with the valve. So the way you do that is by taking apart your coil unit here and I'll show you that. Alright, so here we have one of our core chokes. Now usually there are three rivets if it's never been open or screws that hold this top piece on. So first thing you need to do to check this adjustment or your choke stat lever adjustment is to drill out those rivets or remove the screws. Hey, so how do you check the adjustment on your choke stat lever? Well if you'll notice right here there is a little divot uh, inside the actual casting. Now, when you move the mechanism up, this will only move so far. And you can see it moves back and forth now. But all the way over will indicate that the choke is fully closed. There's certain size gauges that you place in that hole and ensure that this lever here can only move so far over with you still be able with you still being able to get the gauging tool in that hole. It, you can use a drill bit, you don't need a gauging tool, um, but that's how you check the adjustment of your choke stat lever. Now that choke stat lever 
is the thing that is going to fully close your valve here on the choke. And if the gauging tool doesn't fit, you can adjust it by bending this rod here, uh, right where my finger is, in order to get it where it needs to be so you can get that gauging tool in there with the lever. Okay, now that the choke is closed, another thing that has happened is the fast idle cam is now engaged with the follower. And this is why when you first start the car, the idle is a lot higher than it normally is when it's at operating temperature. Uh, this can be adjusted by using a Torx bit and turning this till you get your required number of RPMs. That is number two, the second item that you need to check on your carburetor's choke system. Now you've given it a pump of gas, the choke is closed. The stat lever is all the way down, the fast idle cam's engaged, you turn the key and start the car. Within about a second, what's going to happen is vacuum is going to increase and it is going to work your primary vacuum brake. Now what the primary vacuum brake does is it will open the choke lever or the choke plate slightly to allow a little bit more air into the carburetor, ever so slightly leaning the mixture. Now, once the car is started, and as soon as it kicks in, it doesn't need as much fuel. So that's what this accomplishes. And you can check that adjustment with an angle gauge on top of the butterfly valve here. And you can adjust it by turning this screw here to get the proper angle uh, when it initially pulls back and you would Add some vacuum to this with a vacuum gauge in order to keep this lever all the way back. Uh, you can also bend this rod here if you need it. All right, now that the car has been idling for, for about 30 or 40 seconds, the primary vacuum brake has engaged after the first second or two of you starting the car to lean the mixture out. Now your secondary vacuum brake should be kicking in. And all this does is enhance the plate opening that the primary vacuum brake has given you, allowing a little bit more air into the carburetor and allowing it to uh, idle a little bit smoother. Uh, you can adjust this by bending this rod down here. And I know it's difficult to see, but you would also do that with an angle gauge on the butterfly valve. So I know I've been talking a lot about an angle gauge. Well, what exactly is an angle gauge? An angle gauge is this guy right here. It almost acts like a level. And when you attach it to the valve on the carburetor and you keep the bubble centered like a level, it will tell you what angle your plate is open. Um, certain cars are different. They have different specifications, but you should be able to look that up in a service manual. And then the last item uh, or measurement or adjustment that you could check on your electronic quadrajet or dual jet carburetor is the unloader mechanism. Now that really doesn't affect the drivability, so I'm not really going to delve into it here. All that does is if you flooded the engine, giving it too much gas, or your car is not starting properly, you can push the gas pedal all the way to the floor. That will open up the choke, leaning out the mixture, and hopefully allowing the flooded engine to start. All right, guys, so there you go. Those are the five adjustments that you can make to your electronic quadrajet or dual jet carburetor in order to ensure that your choke works properly. Make sure you hit that subscribe button because in coming videos, I'm going to run through each one of those subsystems that I listed and show you how to get your adjustment just right. So make sure you stay tuned and check back for that. In the meantime, if you like this video or found it helpful, please hit the like button. I'll see you in the next one.